Hello and welcome. In this devlog, I want to show my new game. It's a 2D side scroller in which you control this cute little robot named Neil who tries to escape from Wall of Death. Neil isn't actually a robot. The plot is that he is a simple, small program inside of the computer. And the computer was corrupted by a virus that destroys everything in its way. Virus already destroyed most of the data and corrupted most of the programs. These programs now spread virus everywhere. Main task of your protagonist is to run and try to find some semblance of safe place outside corrupted parts of the computer. Idea of this game started as just a simple runner, but now when I see Neil's sprite, I have many ideas for additional mechanics. I am planning to give player an ability to collect pieces of data to save them from virus, and maybe even buy some upgrades in exchange for these files. But upgrade system is one of the things I am not sure about. Idea of files as collectibles is really good for gameplay because it encourages player to choose routes that isn't worth it otherwise and gives some challenge for those who seek it. But collectibles that you can't use in any way isn't the best practice. I mean, it's good, but not ideal. And for now, I can't find interesting enough upgrades for this system to be fun. It can be an additional maximal speed, acceleration, jump height, and stuff like that. But I can't say if it would work at least until I'll see the whole picture about levels in this game and mechanics around them. Speaking of levels, all the ideas they have for this game is vertical levels where you should go mostly up or down. It'll change the dynamic of this game and add more variety. I am almost 100% sure that I want vertical levels in this game, but there is a little problem with this that I should solve. We'll get to this problem later in more details. And the last idea is some sort of boss battles. Neil is an offensive program and he don't have any real weapons, but there is a hook and chain in his hand that he can use to sort of attack somebody or throw himself into the target. I think this should be fun and give player some time to rest from running. And everybody loves to destroy gigantic bosses. Now let's get to the game itself and look what do we have here. The main thing I was focusing on in this iteration is player controls and movement. And here's the thing. Actually, I plan to make this video a week after my last video. Well, uh, full week would be enough to do player controls, he said. But it turned out to be really deep and narrow rabbit hole. It's actually my first experience with Godot in quite a long time. Three years, maybe. And last time I wasn't interested in physics engine at all. This time it was all about physics engine, and I think I ran into most, of, if not all, of the problems this engine has. First of all, good for me, in the last version of Godot you can snap body to flu if it's close enough. Bad for me, I found that this feature exists after many problems with character shaking or thinking that he isn't on flu when he is. Then I found a bug. If your velocity is low enough and wall is in front of you, engine first finds out about your collision with flu, not wall. This means that it isn't stopping you from going into the wall for some frames and then throws you back out of collision when it starts thinking that you got too far into the wall. Character starts shaking and it looks absolutely awful. There is no problem in controlling character at this moment, but I think that it isn't that important whether your controls are good or not if your player don't like what's happening on the screen at this moment. After fixing these bugs, I put the most helpful quality of life feature, automatic ledge hanging and climbing. One of the most annoying things that might happen to you is falling from cliff just because you missed it by some pixels. Now you are saved from this problem. Fortunately, this feature was very easy and there was no problems with it. Just some recasts and changes to velocity. All in all, this is simple but convenient movement mechanic. You can jump, hang, run forward and walk back. In forward movement you accelerate each frame and for now the maximum speed is 10 times higher than minimal speed as the character starts with. It encourages player to move constantly, but if you need to stop moving, be careful, because your momentum still affects you and it might take some time to decelerate. So don't fall into the deadly pit before you stop. If for some reason you need to go back, you can do it without any problems. When you walk back, speed is constant and deceleration is almost instant, but you move quite slowly and you know that your death is getting closer with every step. And yes, there is no way to turn your character and go left on full speed. Partially it's about design. When you move so slowly you feel vulnerable and you really feel that this isn't a good idea. And partially it's about character sprite. As you can see it's asymmetrical. To make it move left you need to redraw it, swap hands and legs. 
Then make a animation again for this rotated sprite. It'll take a really long time and tight with additional problems about pixel perfect rotation of hands. Actually, there are many examples in which asymmetrical sprites just flip to go left, and this isn't big deal for players. But I don't want to go with this approach. Let's get back to mechanics. All the things I've mentioned earlier was completed in 4 days, and then I get to a hook and its mechanic. This is the part of the story where it transforms into some sort of a horror for me. But don't worry, I'll skip most of the pain of this process. Boy oh boy, this was a simple task at first glance. Godot has everything you need to do that. Rigid bodies, joints and all of that, right? Wrong. I won't say anything bad about rigid bodies. I had many issues with these objects, but it might be that I am just missing something, and I'll try to use them again later to better understand all of the features and downsides of it. But one thing I am confident about is that joints are really buggy and there is no way you can generate them from code without getting strange behavior of jointed objects. There is already an issue about this problem on Godot's GitHub, and it will be fixed sooner or later, but it will happen only after the official release of Godot 4.0. When I realized that this problem isn't solvable for now, I've started trying every way possible to create this chain. Of course, I started with those that require less code, but none of them worked for me. In the end, I just decided to go full throttle on coding just to be sure that I won't have more problems with things supplied by engine anymore. Good for me, I worked on project about close simulation in university. It's an interesting subject actually, and chain simulation is quite similar to it, but a little bit easier. For those who are interested in closed simulation, I recommend to read about Verlay integration. I'll leave a link to the one of the videos showing cool features of it in the description. But no more distractions. Let's get back to the story. I've waited 6 days to mess with the engine and then did everything by myself using Verlay integration in 2 days. Yeah, sometimes most of us pass isn't the best one. After some more tweaks and 2 days later, there it is. You can shoot hook into any wall and then swing on it and simulation even works correctly with any obstacles. If chain is too long and you fell on ground, you can move on it as in any other case, but still limited by length of chain. Most of the mechanics around hook aren't polished enough for now. Swing is good, but not ideal, and I might change controls later, but the bulkiest point now is hook dash. If you hit jump button while on hook, it propels you to the hook point. Your movement at this state is affected by gravity, so in most cases you won't really get to the hook point itself, but you'll get a very good forward momentum. I want this dash to be used as a way to control movement direction in midair, and to have better control of character. It should be more of a tool, not the best way to move. But now it's actually the fastest way to move, except running at full speed. Keeping in mind that it takes a lot of time to get to the maximum speed, and it takes absolutely no time to hook and dash, it's surely not the way it should stay. Now we've got to the problem I mentioned before. Dash is obviously the main thing that makes vertical levels possible. You can go down without this thing, but you can go up effectively. If I set a cooldown to dash, it won't be the best way to go forward anymore, but it will make vertical levels much harder or maybe even impossible. So this is a simple problem to solve. For now I'm thinking about shorter distance for hook to make dash less effective. It's actually too long now, so long that at maximum distance it causes lags just because of so many chain pieces recalculating position each frame. But I'm thinking about making it really short, like half of the screen, or maybe even less, so that you think more carefully if you can use it or not. Of course, this change should be supported by better GUI, larger beam for hook targeting system, and more info about trying to create feelings of robot vision. With many numbers, most of them might be unnecessary just to create that feeling, but some should be helpful like burning signs on deadly pits, lazy beam and more. Maybe even passes for jump and dash, but it'll be hard one because there is no easy way to check collision for curve. For this reason I am not planning to work on this feature in the next iteration. Maybe later. For now I want to add wall of death, simple enemies, background and make GUI useful. Or maybe should I say just my GUI, because now we have nothing actually. All of these tasks is highly dependent on the art, so I think this station will be mostly about drawing and animating. It's a good thing, because I want to rest from coding and debugging for some time. Thanks for watching, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to know if you liked this devlog and of course, share your ideas about ways to make this content better. Stay safe, have a good day and bye!